since we brought up Chimp Empire, let me ask you about relationships. I think we've talked about relationships. Yeah, I only date homo sapiens. <laughs> uh, the, it's the morning meditation. The night right? is still young. You are human. No, but you are also animal. Mm. Don't sell yourself short. No, I always say, listen, any discussion on the Huberman Lab podcast about sexual health or anything, I always we the, the, the critical four is consensual, age appropriate, context appropriate, species appropriate. Species appropriate. Well, can I just tell you about sexual selection? Um, I've been watching Life in Color with David Attenborough. There's a, I've been watching a lot of nature documentaries. Talking about inner peace, it brings me so much peace to watch mm -hmm. nature at its worst and at its best. So Life in Color is a series on Netflix where it uh, presents some of the most colorful animals on earth and kind of tells their story of how they got there through natural selection. So, you know, you have the peacock with the feathers and it's just so, such incredible colors. Like the, the peacock has these uh, tail feathers, uh, the, the male, that are like gigantic and they're super colorful and there are these eyes on on it. It's not eyes, it's like eye-like areas. And and they wiggle their ass like to show the tail. They wiggle the tails. The eye spots. The called. eye spots, yes, thank you. You know this probably way better than me. I, I'm just quoting it. No, no, David no please Edinburgh. continue. But it was, it, it's just, I'm watching this and then the female is as boring looking as, po like she has no colors and nothing, but she's standing there bored just, seeing this entire display and i'm just wondering like the entirety of life on earth or not the entirety post bacteria is like in, in at least in part maybe in large part can be described through this process of natural selection of sexual selection so dudes fighting <laughs> and then women selecting it seems like it's just the the entirety of that series shows some incredible birds and insects and shrimp. They're all beautiful and colorful. Mantis and just, shrimp. Mantis shrimp. They're just, they're incredible. Mm -hmm. And it's all about getting laid. It's fascinating. Like I, I just, um, and it, there's nothing like watching that and Chimp Empire to make you realize we humans, that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. That's all we're doing. Mm -hmm. And all the beautiful variety, all the bridges and the buildings and the rockets and the internet, all of that is this kind of, is, is at least in part, this kind of uh, a product of this kind of showing off for each other I, and all the wars and all of this. Anyway, uh, I'm, well, I'm not there's sure a, what I'm asking. Oh, well, relationships. There, well, yes. right. Um, before you ask about relationships, I think what's um, clear is that every species, it seems, animal species wants to make more of itself and protect its young. Well, to protect its young is non obvious. So not destroy enough um, of itself uh, that it can't get more to reproductive competent age. I mean, I think that, you know, we have a, a natural, I mean, healthy people have a natural reflex to protect children. Well, I don't know and that. And those that can't. Well, wait a minute, wait, 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 wait a minute. I've seen enough animals that are murdering the children sure. of some other. Sure, there's even siblicide. They're like, first of all, I just want to say that I, I was um, delighted in your delight around animal kingdom stuff, because this is a favorite uh, theme of mine as well. But there's, for instance, some fascinating uh, data on, for instance, uh, for those that grew up on farms, they'll be familiar with free martins. You know about free martins? This is, they're cows that have multiple um, calves inside them. And there's a situation in which the calves will secrete, if there's more than one inside, will secrete chemicals that will um, hormonally castrate the, ca the calf next to them so they can't reproduce. So already in the womb, they are fighting for future resources. That's how early this stuff can start. So it's chemical warfare in the womb against the siblings. Sometimes there's outright siblicide. Siblings are born, they kill one another. Um, this also becomes biblical stories, right? Mm -hmm. um, there are instances of cuttlefish, beautiful cephalopods like octopuses, um, and that is the plural as we, yeah, um, we made the meme. The, on the um, internet. Oh yeah, that became a meme or a little discussion. Uh, yeah, years it spread ago. pretty quick. Oh yeah. And now we uh, just resurfaced it. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> the dismay in your voice is so amusing. Um, in any event, the, the male cuttlefish will disguise themselves by as female cuttlefish infiltrate the female cuttlefish uh, um, group and then mate with them, you know, um, all, all sorts of um, 
you know, types of covert uh, yep, operations. There we go. So I think that. <laughs> Um, it's like a drinking game where every time we say covert in a contract in this uh, episode, you have to take a, a, a shot of espresso. Um, please don't do that. You'd be dead by the end. Um, so actually just a small tangent. It does make me wonder how much intelligence covert contracts require. It seems like not much. If they, if we could, if you can do it in the animal kingdom, there's some kind of instinctual, it, it is based perhaps yeah. in like fear. Yeah, it could be um, simple algorithm. If, 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 you know, if there's some ambiguity about numbers and I'm not with these guys and, you know, then flip to the alternate strategy. Yeah. I actually have a, a story about this that I think is relevant. I used to have cuttlefish in my lab in San Diego. Uh, we went and got them from a guy out in the desert. We put them in the lab. It was amazing. And they had a postdoc who was studying prey capture and cuttlefish. They have a very ballistic, extremely rapid strike and grab of the shrimp. And they, um, we were using high-speed cameras uh, to, to characterize all this. Looking at binocular, they normally have their eyes on the side of their head. When they see something they want to eat, the eyes translocate to the front, which allows them stereopsis. Death perception allows them to strike. We were doing some unilateral eye removals. They would miss, et cetera. Okay, this is, has to do with eye spots. This was during a government shutdown period where the ghost shrimp that they normally um, feed on that we would ship in from the Gulf down here um, weren't available to us. So we had to get different shrimp. And what we noticed was the, the cuttlefish normally would just sneak up on the shrimp. We, know, we learned this by data collection. And if the shrimp was facing them, they would do this thing with their tentacles of kind of enchanting the, cuddle, mm -hmm. the, the shrimp. And if the shrimp wasn't facing them, they wouldn't do it. And they would ballistically grab it and, and, and eat them. Well, when we got these new shrimp, the new shrimp had eye spots on their tails. And then the cuttlefish would do this kind of attempt to enchant regardless of the position of the ghost shrimp. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? Okay, well, it means that there's some sort of algorithm in the cuttlefish's mind that says, okay, if you see two spots, move your tentacles. Mm -hmm. So it can be, as you pointed out, it can be a, a fairly simple operation, but it looks diabolical. It looks cunning, but all it is is strategy B. Yeah, but it's still somehow emerged i mean i i, I yeah. don't think that Success. calling it an algorithm doesn't I, I feel like well there's a circuit there that gets implemented in a certain context but that circuit had to evolve you do realize a super intelligent ai will look at us humans and will say the exact thing there's a circuit in there that evolved right. to do this the algorithm a and algorithm b yep. and it's trivial and to us humans it's fancy and beautiful and we write poetry about it but it's because just sub, we don't understand the subconscious because they want that ai algorithm cannot see into what it can't see it doesn't understand the underworkings of what allows all of this conversation stuff to manifest and we can't even see it how could ai see it maybe it will maybe maybe ai will solve and give us access to our subconscious maybe your ai friend or coach, like I think Andreessen and others are, are arguing is going to happen at some point. It's going to say, hey, you know, Lex, you're making decisions lately that are not good for you, but it's because of this algorithm that you picked up in childhood, that if you don't state your explicit needs up front, you're not going to get what you want. So why do it? From now on, you need to actually make a list of every absolutely outrageous thing that you want, no matter how outrageous. And communicate that immediately and that will work. What we, we're talking about cuttlefish and sexual selection and then we went into some, uh, where do we go? Well, and you said you were excited. I was, I was, I was excited. Well, you were just saying, what about these, these covert contracts and yes. animals do them? I think it's simple contextual yes, engagement of, of a neural right. circuit, which is not just nerd speak for saying they do a different strategy. It's saying that there has to be a, a circuit there, a hardwired circuit, maybe learned, but probably hardwired that can be engaged, right? You can't build neural machinery out of, in a moment, um, you need to build that circuit over time. What is building it over time? You select for it. The, the cuttlefish that did not have that alternate context-driven circuit mm -hmm. didn't survive when there was a, uh, when all the shrimp that they normally eat disappear and the, the eye spotted shrimp showed up. And there were a couple that had some miswiring. This is why mutation, right? X-Men type stuff is real. Um, they had a mutation that had some alternate wiring and that wiring got selected for it became a mutation that was adaptive as opposed to maladaptive. This is something people don't often understand about genetics is that 
it only takes a few generations to devolve a trait, make it worse, but it takes a long time to evolve an adaptive trait. There are exceptions to that, but most often that's true. So a species needs a lot of generations. We are hopefully still evolving as a species and it takes a long time but uh, to evolve more adaptive traits, but doesn't take long to, to devolve adaptive traits so that you're getting sicker or you're not functioning as well. So choose your mate wisely.